Hello options traders, welcome everyone. And I wanted to post a, another video here on technical analysis. Every once in a while I do post some tech analysis videos and I do get a lot of requests for pivot points. And you kind of get these strange lines on your graph, these support and resistance lines and traders going, well, what are they? How do we use them and where do they come from? Well, pivot points were originally developed by floor traders and they are like most technical indicators designed to give potential signals for turning points in prices. Now the first calculation that is done is what we might call a reference point or a baseline. And that's what they call the pivot point. So all of our support and resistance calculations hinge or pivot around this pivot point. So once we have that calculated, you will see support and resistance levels. The support levels are labeled S1, S2, and S3, and they will sit below the pivot point. So if the stock price is falling and we hit support one, well, we'd expect it to kind of level off and kind of find some support there. If it blasts past that, we're going to look to S2. That's going to sit lower on the chart. If it goes through S2, we're going to look at S3. Similar idea to the upside, we're going to get three resistance points labeled R1, R2, and R3. These will sit above your pivot point. So if the stock is rising and we bump into R1, we're going to expect it to kind of level off there for a little bit. If it goes through it, we look to R2. If it goes through that, we look to R3. It's important to understand about the timeframes. Your pivot points depend on the time frame of your chart. So if you are using 15 minute charts or less, it will be calculated based on the previous day's data. So if you're using a five minute candle, all of your pivot points, your support and resistance levels are calculated off of the previous day's data. If you're using 30 to 120 minute charts, it will use the previous week's data. And if you're using a day chart, which is probably what most of you will be using, it actually uses the previous month's data. So it's important to understand is that once these pivot points are set, they remain for the entire time. So for instance, if you're using a 60 minute chart falls in this time frame right here, you are going to be looking at the previous week's data. And that means that your pivot point, your support one, two, and three, and your R one, two, and three are going to stay fixed for the entire week. If you're using a day chart, again, it's using the previous month's data. So it's going to remain fixed for the entire month. That pivot point, those support and resistance points are not going to change for the entire month. And then on when the new month rolls around, then it will do the recalculations. So let's step through the calculations. We'll start with a pivot point one first. To find the pivot point, you simply take the high, low, close, and divide by three. Notice that the opening price isn't used, which is a little bit of a curiosity. Most of your technical analysis is always open, high, low, close. But for the pivot points, we just look at high, low, and close. So let's say that we have a high of 105 and a low of 95, and the close is right here between them. So if we add up all three of these and divide by three, we get our pivot point as 100. And that's just because the high and low are exactly symmetric around the close. But Let's say the close is down here towards the low, maybe at 94. Now we add up all of these, divide by three, and our pivot point is actually 98. On the other hand, if the closing price, let's say, is up here towards the high, maybe at 104, we add them all up, divide by three, our pivot point is going to be 101.33. So the idea is that the closing price is used as a way to add a little bit more weight. So if the close is towards the high, it pushes our pivot point up and it pushes it down if this close is towards the low. So if you think about it, the closing price is arguably the most important price of the day. Doesn't matter where it was during the day or even where it opened, where was it when the final bell rang? So one reason the opening price isn't used is that it is contained within the high and the low, but they just wanna add a little bit of weight with the closing price. So again, very simple, high, low, close divided by three, and that is your pivot point. So for these examples, I'm going to assume the high is 105, the low is 95, the close is 100, and therefore the pivot point is 100. 
So let's take a look at our first round of calculations, our support and resistance levels 1. R1, or resistance 1, is found by taking 2 times the pivot point minus the low. So in this example, we're going to take 2 times the pivot point of 100, subtract off the low of 95, and we get 105. S1, our support 1, is found by 2 times the pivot point minus the high. So for this example, we're going to have 2 times the pivot point of 100 minus the 105 high gives us a 95 support. So if this is our pivot point right here at 100, our first resistance is 105 and our first support is 95. All right, now what about calculation two? Your resistance two equals the pivot point plus the range, which is just the high minus the low. And so in this example, 100 pivot point plus a range, remember the high was 105 minus the 95 low, that's a 10 point range, gives us 110. Support two is the pivot point minus the range. So we're going to have 100 minus 10 or 90. So here were the first levels of resistance and support. So the next is going to be a resistance of 110. Second level of support will be down here at 90. What about S3 and R3? Well, R3 is found by taking the high plus two times the pivot point minus the low. So we're going to take the 105 high plus two times pivot point of 100 minus the low of 95. So this is 5 right here inside the parentheses times 2 is 10. 105 plus 10 is 115. Support 3 is the low minus 2 times the high minus the pivot point. So in this example, we had 2 times the high of 105 minus the pivot point of 100. Again, is a 5-point difference times 2 is 10. But we're going to take the low of 95 and subtract 10. And that gives us 85. So now our third level of resistance is going to be 115, and the support down here will be 85. Now don't get too caught up into thinking, oh, I see how they work once we get R1, which is just five points above the pivot point, we just add it, we go 110, 115, and down here we subtract it, 95, 90, 85. It's working out that clean and neat just because I made the closing price dead center between the high and the low. So that will not always be the case. Well, now that you understand how to do the calculations of a pivot point, let's go over to the E-Trade platform, take a look at how to put them on your system, and then how you read them. So I've got the S&P 500, or the spiders, so I'll just leave them up there. But to find your pivot points, come up here to Studies, click there. And if you don't see it under your Recently Used, you'll need to go to All Studies. And then under P's over here is pivot points. Just click there. Now there are several types of pivot points. The one that I'm showing you here is what's probably called the standard, but there are also Fibonacci pivot points. It's the same idea, but they just kind of run off of a Fibonacci sequence. But I would typically stick with the standard. So notice what they're looking for here. What color do you want your pivot point? Here's R1, here's S1. What colors do you want to use? Here's R2, S2, and here's R3, S3. And so you just choose Save, and there they are. So because I'm in a day chart, remember we're using the past month's data. So this is going to stay here. As you can see from the beginning of June, it hasn't changed. It's going to stay there all month. So for June of 2020, right here in the black line, at about, let's call it 295, is the pivot point. So here's R1. We shot through that a few days ago, so we would look for resistance around R2, and we didn't get through it. If we did, we would look for it to come up here to R3. So right now, we're dead center between R1 and the pivot point. If we fall below here, we would look for this level at about 282 or so for support one. If we go through that, we would look down here at about uh, 261 for support two. And if we go through that, we would look at about 227 for support three. So that's just how easy it is to use your pivot points, and hopefully it gives you a little bit more insights into what you're looking at. One of the reasons that they're so powerful, remember that the main thing that makes technical analysis work is that it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And if a lot of people are using pivot points, and a lot of them do, 
there's probably some pretty good reasons to believe that the crowd will react when these prices are reached. So if you're new to trading and looking for a simple way to look for potential turning points, try out your pivot points and give those a shot. If you want, type some comments into the Facebook group here and let me know what you think. For anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.